You, it's your host that don't boast AC, location, Kissimmee, organization, the center, part of the LGBTQ, A, B, C, Z, A through Z, well, you know, that community. And I love them a lot. Anywho, we're about to holler at Tommy and figure out what they got to offer. Let's get it. Today, we are at the center at Kissimmee. So what we want to, or what I want to ask you today is, um, firstly, what is your story and kind of how you got here? All right, so um, I'm an Orlandoan, born and raised. Uh, went to Boone High School. Um, didn't do the college thing right away, um, but after a couple years, decided that I needed some direction, figure things out. Um, so I went to Valencia, and then I transferred to Rollins and majored in English and minored in writing. Um, and then I worked for a couple of years as an accounting assistant. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Um, definitely not my favorite subject, but um, you know, it paid the bills for a few years. Um, and I had done some volunteer work and some summer employment with the Orlando Fringe Festival. Um, and when they f hired their first development director, um, they hired me. So um, they put me through a grant writing program with Edith, Edith Bush Institute at Rollins. Um, so I got certified um, to be a proposal writer and researcher. Um, and so that really kind of started my career in nonprofit. Um, and then uh, I worked there for a few years. And then when the position became available at the center, um, it happened to be my old executive director from Orlando Fringe. And um, he asked me to come over and work at the center and I took it. So that's how I got here. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about how the center is impacting the community in Kissimmee and kind of what they do for the community. Sure. So um, the LGBT Center Orlando has been um, around for 40 years. We opened in 1978. Um, and it very quickly went from being a social support um, organization to a health services organization with the AIDS epidemic in the 80s. Um, and uh, so we do, our primary services are HIV testing. Um, everything that we do is free. Um, so we do HIV testing, hepatitis C testing, SDI testing, um, mental health counseling, there's youth programs. Um, we, we have all sorts of different social and sport groups for people, um, including, um, you know, men living with HIV or transgender. Um, or even children who are discovering their gender identity or sexual orientation. We have groups for the whole spectrum. Um, and last year, well, post Pulse, um, you know, we realized that there was a huge need in the Latin community, especially the queer Latin community. Um, and we get a lot of people in our Orlando Center um, from Osceola County and Sanford and outlying counties. Um, and so it just sort of was a natural progression for us to open a center here in Kissimmee. Um, so last August, we opened our doors right here on Monument. And uh, we w have been very well received by the community and uh, we feel right at home here and we hope that we can make some positive impact for the community down here as well. What would be your advice to those who are kind of, you know, scared to kind of come out or kind of, not to say come out, but they're scared of how they're perceived out in the world. And, you know, it's tough for them. Like, I'm not, not gay or anything like that. I'm not part of me, but I have a lot of students who are, mm -hmm. or identify themselves as that. and. It's hard for them, and I'm, a, I'm an art teacher, so my room is all love, you can do whatever you want to do, it's very open, and I want my students to be themselves in the room. But the thing about it is, when they leave my room, they get bullied, mm. or they get, you know, they feel a certain way. When they come in my room, they feel safe. So kind of, what, do you, what would be your advice to those who don't feel safe out there in the world, and or those who can create that kind of safe space for the people who don't feel wanted or feel accepted? 
Well, um, yeah, you know, coming out is tough, especially when you're a teenager because um, you're trying to discover who you are and how the world works. And sometimes other kids are not nice. Um, and sometimes you don't know, you know, what your support system is like from um, from adults or administrators or other folks in your life. So um, the best advice that I could give would be to call us and reach out. You know, if if you are struggling at home or if you're struggling at school, um, you know, find a gay straight alliance group or an LGBT group at school, um, or you know, connect with an adult that you trust. Um, we partner with some really amazing youth organizations. Um, we partner with Zebra Coalition, who um, provides mental health support, um, um, family support, um, housing support, um, you know, substance abuse support, um, things like that for LGBTQ youth. Um, a lot of their kids have been displaced or don't have support systems, so they help get them into services. Um, and then we also partner with Orlando Youth Alliance, which is a fantastic network of, um, of, of people in the community who support LGBT youth. And um, it's really sort of a it's, it's a, it's a giant youth group. And the kids get together every week. Um, they talk about issues that they're having at school or at home. And um, they realize that there's other kids that they can relate to and there are facilitators in the group to help them kind of navigate those issues and, and deal with it in a healthy way. Um, so we definitely have resources for um, you know, young adults and teens that, um, that need it. And um, you know, we're a safe space, so if you need to get, you know, just get out of, <laughs> get out of the world for a few minutes, we have a great library here. Um, with everything from LGBT resources to, you know, fiction and things that can, you know, just kind of pull you out of reality for a little while. Um, but yeah, I think having a safe space is really important and just knowing that we're here. We're here in Kissimmee, we're also in Orlando. And um, even if it's not something that we can directly help you with, I'm sure that we have a connection in the community that, you know, we can make that bridge for you. They don't like the community at all, and they either have a religious background or a cultural background to where it's like, it's an abomination, mm -hmm. and etc. So, for me personally, I believe that we're all human, we all deserve respect, we all we treat others with respect, we treat others that like they're human, even though they may have a different religious background, a different cultural background, different sexual orientation, whatever it should be, they're still human. Right. You know and so how how do how do we collectively as a, as a whole or as a society kind of bridge that gap between having an understanding of what's going on in each community and how it affects you know each other in some type of way? Like how do we how are we able to kind of bridge that gap? You know? It's a great question. Um, you know. We've come a long way. For sure, yeah, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> We've definitely come a long way, um, but we still have a long way to go. Um, and I think that, you know, especially, I grew up in a pretty religious household. Um, my mom and I don't really talk too much, um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I identify as a lesbian. Um, and so I don't have a lot of family support, so I can kind of understand when somebody's struggling with that. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it was definitely um, surrounding myself with good people, people who were interested not in the fact that I have an LGBT status, but that you know I want to help the community, and um, you know that I want to. I have personal goals. I want to travel and see the world, you know, and and they're more interested in helping me reach those goals and find my own success right. than they are in who I yeah, sleep with, you know what I mean? And that, I believe that that's, the, that's what we need to get to. Important. Mm -hmm. I understand, like, okay, this person is doing this, or this person may be part of this group, community, whatever it could be, and you may not seem uh, aligned with that, but if the goal is, like if you both all have a goal to, I don't know, feed the homeless or whatever it could be, Y'all can work together because it's the same goal, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like we should all kind of 
kind of put the, the judgments and put all the things aside and especially if we're all doing positive work or we're doing good work right the betterment of the community we should all always just come together regardless of gender race age right all the other different categories i can, I can go down the list of but um but yeah that's 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 i think that's what we see to reach to so i'm trying to, i'm trying me personally i'm trying to figure out ways to kind of bridge that gap but it's it's tough in this american society it is. It's definitely tough. I think it's all about connections. You know, you you just the more that you build your network and you build that network with people that um, add positive energy to your life and to your world, then um, you know that's that's how you do it. That's how you make it happen. We all have different things that we bring to the table, right? We have different connections. We have different skills, um, and so the more that you diversify your circle. The better you're making your community. Well, yeah, that, and I always try to tell people, man, go out and, 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 and view different perspectives from different people. Kind of get out of your, you know, I would say when you when you when you're living in your hometown, go out and travel. Just mm -hmm. go meet someone else, or meet someone else in a different city, different culture, because you understand that you can learn something. You can learn to do something a different way, in a better way. Right. If you, if you just ask, or you just look out the window, you know, it's, it's always a different way that you'll be enlightened like oh man I never knew but you'll never know unless you go out and try to right so um, I think that that's key kind of diversifying your self um, your circle as well as your perspective on how you look at life that is what would be your three B's so when I say three B's when you tell when I'm talking to my students or anyone that I'm mentoring or counseling I would say um, you should be grateful, you should be positive, and you should be uh, persistent, you know, in whatever it is that you do. And so a lot of times kids want to be a restaurant owner or a business owner or whatever they be. I tell them they need, they need to do these three things. Mm -hmm. well, those are, it changes all the time, but sometimes I say you need to be grateful, positive, and be you know, dedicated. So what would be your three things for uh, anyone in the LGBT community or the youth? period on if they want to be something like you, how you are, or they want to be like you when they grow up, what would be your views and kind of advice for them? Wow, okay. Um, I, being grateful is definitely a good one because um, if you can't be grateful, then, you know, you. <laughs> nobody got to where they are by themselves, exactly. just saying. Um, we all had helpers, so be grateful. Be grateful for every little thing. Um, um, you know, be focused. Stay focused on your goals, because um, if you lose focus, then you lose sight of where you're trying to go. Um, so be focused and be persistent. Don't let anybody ever tell you no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Somebody tells you you can't, you show them wrong. Right. <laughs> It should be, a, it should be a, igniting the fire to your, the plans to your fire. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate how, it. How, how, can, how can people you know, follow you, or not you, but the center, or you too, <laughs> but the, the center of like, is there any social media accounts that they can follow you on and uh, support? Yeah, so um, we just started our, our Kissimmee Center Facebook page. Okay. Um, literally yesterday, <laughs> so um, I think the uh, I think our username is LGBT Center Kissimmee. Um, so find us on Facebook. Um, if you can't find us that way, just search the the Center Orlando, and we'll pop up, and then you can connect to us through there. Um, but we have a website. We're on social media. We have Instagram, Twitter. It's all you'll you'll find us if you search Center Orlando. Um, and yeah, just you know. Hop on there, say hi, um, join our mailing list um, so that we can keep in touch. We send it out about once a month with information about what's going on at the center, what's going on in the community with our business partners and um, and you know other LGBT organizations. And we just really try to stay connected and, and keep everybody um, in the loop of, of what's going on and how they can help. And we always need volunteers, so sign up to volunteer. It is, yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, guys. Thank you.